So, can we take a few moments to just talk about the panda that was in the opening song for Jujutsu Kaisen? Like, why did nobody tell me that there was a literal panda going across rooftops within Jujutsu Kaisen? Like, if you would have told me that, I would have caught up with the series a long time ago. Why did no one ever mention this to me with their manga recommendations? Like, that's legitimately hilarious. It it's funny, so out of place with everything else that was going on within this story. I'm just like, what is... What is even happening? It reminds me of Beam from Chainsaw Man and just how out of place it was when, you know, Chainsaw Man was doing the rodeo on Beam. I was just like, what? I, I don't know, just like, that That really kind of, like, threw me for a loop. I was just like, what in the world did I just witness? But okay, jokes aside, though, after watching this first episode... I can definitely see Chainsaw Man getting a good anime too. If someone like Studio Mappa can do such fantastic work with Jujutsu Kaisen, I do think that Chainsaw Man could get a fantastic anime adaptation as well. But I could be wrong, we'll see where it goes, because we know one day eventually that series will get an anime announcement. But okay, enough about Chainsaw Man, because this is a Jujutsu Kaisen video. So let's get right into it. First impressions overall, I already kind of saw brief clips of this first episode on YouTube about a few weeks back because apparently there was a leak. There was a leak that happened and it caused it to where I think the first two episodes actually of the series got leaked and many got to actually see it firsthand, get to see kind of what they were expecting from this anime adaptation, and I heard all around good things. Like, I didn't personally watch the entire episode because I wanted to watch it when it actually did come out with the anime season, but I heard many good things. Many were telling me that, you know, the, the story of the first episode was well-paced, it was brilliant, they did a fantastic job with the art and animation, voice acting was great, everything about it was just spot on. Studio Mappa did so much love and care to this series. So, I already went in to this first episode kind of aware that it was going to be good. And then, I also saw many in the community just jumping for joy, like, holy crap, this is amazing, this is insane. So, I was even more excited, I'm like, holy crap, this is going to be really good. So, I watched the first episode, and man oh man... That, that's a good first episode. Like, this is a really, really good first episode. The hype was definitely worth it. The build-up was worth it. And Studio Mappa and the entire team that is working on this series truly did go in and showed so much care and passion for this story. Now, as some little bit of context, I'm someone that has not really read the manga. I've read the first few chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen. I even did a first impressions on it on this channel about a few months back. But I've never really read that far, so I don't really know what's going to happen. But from what I have personally read and talked about even on this channel, this episode really did adapt everything really, really spot on. Like, it was a 100% correct anime adaptation from the manga to the anime, and it honestly enhanced the experience to such a higher level that I was honestly a bigger fan of this series than I already was. I've been meaning to actually get into this series, but since the anime, you know, was coming, I was like, I'll hold off, I'll see how the anime goes, and depending on how it goes, I'll, you know, read the manga. And this first episode's art animation actually, I think, is a little bit on par, or even maybe in some cases, some parts of it is a little bit even beyond the artwork of the manga. Now, obviously, when it comes to still frames and stuff, the manga will have, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen beat for the anime. But in terms of flow and all that, I, I really think that this anime made... So it gives so much life to what this series is and actually boosted it to a whole other level. I can definitely see this series becoming very popular and actually maybe even having a potential Demon Slayer overall popularity growth depending on how MAPPA actually does this because just like the first episode alone is very telling by just how much care there is like just seeing the character animation the movement the life that is given the setting the POV shots to just the music there is just so much that is done throughout this first episode that shows that this isn't just your normal anime this isn't just your normal like run-of-the-mill anime that's just going to be filling up time for every single week there is so much care put into this you can see that there is a lot of effort put into it and the people working on the project definitely does love this story so let's actually talk about it. what is Jujutsu Kaisen about if this is your first time hearing about which I doubt but somehow if this is your first time hearing about it 
let's get into it. So, for the most part, a brief summary of this would be where our main male character, Yuji, he has someone that is kind of bypassing his life with time. He, he's chilling in an occult club, just, you know, doing ghost stories, etc., just having a good time. And he's only doing this to be able to just do what he wants. For instance, bypass time and be able to leave school before 5, before he can actually go visit his grandpa in the hospital. And we're thrust into a brief sad moment throughout this first episode, where Yuji's grandpa actually straight up dies. And those final moments of the grandpa is really important and gives you a lot of context to Yuji's character and what you can kind of expect from him and why this has been making waves in Weekly Shonen Jump for a very long time because the overall presentation of Yuji's character is one of the main reasons why people have fallen in love with this series is because he is someone that wants people to have proper deaths and this is such a interesting theme it's something so different than what you would expect because when you think about like shonen when you think about stuff in the magazine of weekly shonen jump you think about characters wanting to save the day you know never letting someone die you know all for their friends or they want to be the pirate king they want to be you know a hokage you know etc etc they they always want to be the ruler or the best at something but having a character just straight up say i want someone to have a proper death i want my friends and everyone around me to have a proper death it's so unique it's so different and it makes you really wonder holy crap this this character he's a little bit weird he, he's different and it makes you wonder about his mental state a little bit just because of how he accepts things just right off the bat especially when he sees the curses the ghosts and stuff throughout this episode he just accepts things just straight up and he doesn't really question it too much which is kind of cool honestly but to let you know that there's more fundamental things going on behind the scenes with his character that makes you want to actually know more and this is why there has been a lot of comparisons with you know Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man and why they're just so different because they're dark. They're, they tell very different stories you would not expect from the magazine that they're very unique and I think that's why they've really risen in popularity and why many people talk about them all the time. But okay, getting back into it though, in terms of what the point is though, is Yuji as a character, he eventually encounters these curses at the end of the episode. His friends get in danger, and he obviously butts in because he doesn't want to see them die from the curses and all that, because that's not a proper death. He wants them to live to the end of their life and have an actual proper death like his grandpa. Even though his grandpa regretted his life, you can see in his final, final moments when he's talking to Yuji, he's like, look, don't be like me. Don't live a life to where you end up like me and you don't really have anyone around you. You're not surrounded by friends and family and you just only have one person here. Don't live a life like me. You know, go out of your way and help people. Go out of your way and make sure they live a full life and save people, etc. Do what actually counts, what actually matters. And with that, you could kind of say what Yuji's grandpa gave him was slightly a curse because now he's kind of, you know, conflicted. He's like, I don't want people to actually have like improper deaths. He wants them to to truly be able to be satisfied when they pass on, when they die, he wants them to be happy. And in this case, when he looks at his grandpa's death, even though he was lonely and all that, he did technically have a proper death. He got to say his final words, he got to say what he wanted to say, and that was it. But he can't accept that the people around him are just dying to curses and their lives are being cut short for reasons that really don't make sense. He's like, no, this is not going to happen. So the main point of the episode is him trying to save them from these curses. And he eventually has this cursed object on, which is like a finger, and obviously all these curses and all that want to devour it and if you know they devour it they're going to get really strong you know it's the typical stuff you would see in shonen but obviously our mc takes it upon himself to actually eat the finger which he doesn't even chew the thing he just grubs it down like he just like swallows i'm like whoa I'm like did it, did it taste good but the man just swallows it down and instantly he demolishes that demon slash curse and he gets incarnated as like a crazy strong creature now instantly upon this he's no longer human. So it kind of opens up the story for something very unique, something we have obviously seen before with this type of st uh, story, with, you know, dark elements, a character not being human no more, no longer t typically having the traditional rights or human rights. That's kind of what's happening here. He's now kind of more of a cursed object than anything else. He's no longer human, but at the same time, he's able to somehow keep balance and control of the entity that has now kind of possessed his body. So that is the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen.
Now, obviously, the summary is very simple, but it's so much more than that. There is so much beauty and love within this first episode and so many different scenes. I really love the line work, by the way. That, that's something I really want to mention. When it comes to the line work of this episode, it stood out to me, like, especially with the dog scene when you saw all, like, the dogs pop up and you see how they were just devouring on the curse. I was just like, that's really cool. I liked the, just the artistic design of them, and I just liked the way the characters' is, like, you know, line work is done, too. I don't know, just something about it really really stands out. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'm really excited to actually see this firsthand since I'm technically anime only. I'm curious to see where the story is going to go and see why so many truly do love this series. Why so many go out of their way to recommend this all the time on social media to me as well. I want to see it firsthand and I'm happy I get to actually watch this anime. And so far, this seems to be a fantastic anime adaptation. So we'll see where it goes. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And with that, guys, Chibi out.